how's it going? Today is four strand setups for multipliers. Yeah, let's go. What makes it possible to power cast, pendulum cast, and everything else with four strand is the nature of four strand. It's a lot stiffer than eight strand, and that's what makes it possible. But you have to use a leader with it. So some of the advantages to using braid over mono is bite detection, line strength, lack of stretch. And when you're loading up the rod to cast, it also loads the rod up quicker. And how I fish this on my reels is I always fish them with a top shot because yeah, you don't want to be replacing line all the time. It's expensive. So I put 150 meters of far strand on top of a bottom shot or if you want backing it's not really backing I wouldn't really call it backing because it's more fishing line this is eight strand 50 pound very strong it's on the bottom because you can't cast it but if you're in deep water or a fish runs out it makes no difference you got that strength and you need it there and you can get more line onto your reels this reel here will hold is it 300 meters of 30 pound mono now I've got 400 meters onto it and it's 50 pounds so you're doing much better I mean 50 pounds is all you're ever going to need no matter what you come across if you use 100 pound 8 strand all the way through and you tie it onto your rig you don't have a 100 pound 8 strand all the way through you have a knot at the end of it it's going to fail at around about half the strength of the line so now you've got 50 pound line basically speaking so the way I fish this is with a 120 pound leader and I use my BF knot. You could use an FG or something like that, but they're very big and they don't go on to multipliers very well. So I came up with my own knot and it's the BF knot. It is tiny and it is 100%. People say there's no such thing as 100% knot. There is if it is tied properly and there is a right way and a wrong way to tie a knot and that is it. So when you're dealing with braid, some of the things you're going to need for the future, regardless, is one of these pulling tools here. You saw the video that I made that in. You're going to need some super glue. Well, you don't need it, but it really does help. It really does help. So spooling up multipliers. The bottom shot is very important. That it is level and it is tight, just the same as the top. If it is not level and tight, it will cause vibration in the reel and cause overruns and stuff like that. So you have to be fairly neat and consistent when putting on the bottom shot. It is more important than the top shot in that respect. Now I'll show you how to connect the two. So this is the 50 pound. Sorry for the up there, it's upside downness. 50 pound. I'm gonna put on it. I'm not mention any names. This is just cheap far strand. It is good quality, but it is cheap. So you make a loop, you go through, you go through with the bottom shot, and you go around the main line three times. Fall back the tag, pinch in your finger, and you go around the main line behind that another four times. Once, twice, three times, four times. It's important that this knot is neat. If you can see the yellow main line in between the, the blue line, it's not tied properly. So it kind of gives you a clue whether or not it's going to work or not. So now you've got it like that. So now you can wet it. And you can half close it. Now you can see what I mean. Okay, you can't see the yellow in between the coils of the blue one. Except at the top, obviously. So then you take your pulling stick. and you close it gently. You flex it backwards and forwards to get it to close properly. It won't close first go. And if you flex that backwards and forwards, pull each tag with your teeth while you pull, and that's it. So, put that on my finger and you can see how small that actually is compared to an FG or something like that 
So now the last piece. The only drawback with braid is it frays and then it will pass through these and then your knot will fail. And to stop this from happening, you just put some super glue on it. And you let that soak in. And you just give it a little twirl with your fingers like so, like this. That's it. Now, that knot will not come undone. <laughs> Onto the spooling. This is what I got going here. This is a thread bar held in the vise there. And it's got some stuff to centralize the spool and put tension on it. In here, there's a spring that loads up this so you can get tension on the spool and you tension it with this here. I will do a video on this if you would like. One of the problems with braid is you can't put it on loose. And if you do, it's going to bird's nest and it's going to tighten down on itself and it's going to cut and it's going to be a nightmare. First up, you wind on the knot. I like to put it in the middle generally. So then you just get a couple of turns on it just to get it started. Nice and even as you can. So, and you have to do this on some type of rod butt or something because you can't do this with a spooling station. It's not gonna work. So I've got the tension because of uh, the spooler up there, up the top. And that gives me all the tension I need to get that line on nice and tight. In fact, I think I'll tighten it up a little bit. Just a little bit. That's it now. And the reason for this is, if you're trying to apply pressure with your fingers, you can't wind it onto the spool as evenly as you, as you would like. Tension in the line is what you want. You want it to be hard like mono, the way mono feels on a spool. If it's all spongy, it's no good. Just wind it on nice and evenly, take your time. There's no rush. Once you get built up, you can go a bit faster. In fact, I find you get neater lines if you wind faster. So that's it. So I'm gonna tie on a 120 pound leader on it. So it is important with all leader knots that the tin goes around the tick because it makes it a stronger knot. Because if it's the other way around, this could bite through the tin line and this isn't gonna bite through the fat line. So this is what makes it 100% knot is the fact that it tightens around this main line here, which is now 240 pounds if you do the maths. So there's no way this is going to bite through it. And it holds its integrity because of the fact that it's tied around this and there's nothing pinching this line and making it break. So this is how you tie the BF knot. Get through the hole. Okay. Then you go around both the main line and the tag three times. Once, twice, three times. Now you fall back your tag. You go around just the main line four times. Once, twice, three times, four times. And then you go back down again another four times. Once, twice, three times, four times, okay? You fold out the tag, then you go around again another three times. Once, twice, three times. And then back through the loop. Then you're left with this. So, you pinch the main line to keep it on the leader line and you pull this slowly. Okay. Once you got it like that, then you slide up the bottom half of the knot. Yep. 
Pull down the tag. Slide it up. And pull on the tag. And slide it up. And pull on the tag. And slide it up. And pull on the tag. You should see no orange between these coils on the yellow line. Okay? And you wet it. And you close it a little bit. And then you take your pulling stick, you wrap it around. Just hold the tags in your teeth just one time and pull. Just to make sure they're in the right place. Now slowly work it backwards and forwards. Just applying steady pressure every time you pull. And if the knot's tied correctly, you won't see any orange between the yellow. The front half of the knot here will go hard like plastic. And then you know you're good. Then you just trim your tags. Finish with a drop of glue just to make sure everything stays where it's supposed to be. It doesn't get all frayed. Now just leave that for a second. Don't blow on it or anything like that. Just let it dry in the wind the way it is. And just wait a few seconds, four or five seconds, and then roll it through your fingers. And now this is gone, this knot has gone hard like plastic now because of the glue. And it's not gonna unravel because everything's all stuck together. So I'm gonna wind this onto the reel now, and that'll be it. This is the best setup I've ever used for rough ground, ever. Providing the knots are tied properly. Up to that point, you're on your own. If the knots are tied properly, the rigs will break. If you've got 80 pound rig body, this will break the rig body because the rig body is now 40 pound or less. If you use a 100 pound rig body, it will break right at the swivel where you tie it onto your rig or halfway up the line between you and the rig. So that's it now. Four strand setup. Hope you like it. Hope you get to use it. Hope it helps to catch more fish. I'm Billy. This is Billy with four strand setups from Multipliers. Don't forget, wherever you are in the world, fish on. And remember, brothers and sisters, I'll see you on the beach. Bye.